G'day, Simone. Hi, how are you? I'm Alex. Hi, nice, nice to meet, to meet you. Nice to meet you. Have a seat, please. Thank you. <sighs> well, thanks for doing this, Simone. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Happy to be here. Looking back, describe your life because it's been one hell of a life. It's like turbulent roller coaster ride. It just never ends. It's been fast and, and it's been hard. Simone Starr is about to take us on that wild ride to the dark side of town. She's a private schoolgirl, turned high-class escort, a penthouse pet, swimsuit model, drug smuggler, and the target of a bomb that exploded and disfigured her bodybuilding boyfriend. And that's not the half of it. You have a bomb. You have people being shot. You have this once very good-looking guy wandering around town with a patch over his eye like some modern-day pirate. There's a Molotov cocktail of beauty and danger, and it exploded. Simone survived it all. But as you'll see, what looked so exciting and glamorous from the outside has left her broken and filled with regret. If I sort myself out, I think my addiction and become a, a person that's in your world better, a better person. That maybe, maybe I can find that happiness, you know. But I, I didn't know how to change myself when you're around all that. You become a pretty lousy human. I feel sick in the stomach. <laughs> and I don't want to be that person. <laughs> Simone doesn't have any photos of her childhood, and there's a good reason for it. She never knew her dad. Her mother was a prostitute. Growing up, she was enrolled in exclusive boarding schools. I went to um, Skeggs and then I went to St Hilda's on the Gold Coast. Right. Yeah. Not cheap. Not cheap, but yeah. it wasn't at her expense. Right. Like, she had numerous partners along the way, so I guess that's what funded my schooling. Yeah. She was a prostitute? Oh, she left her third husband and she couldn't pay my boarding school fees. So then she took me out as a day student at St Hilda's in Year 10. And then, um, yeah, that really upset me because I'd have to come home. Mm. I mean, she was doing that privately from our apartment and I couldn't come out of my room. Did she ever push you towards that line of work? <laughs> it's not normal. When they moved to Sydney, Simone's mother began a relationship with nightclub owner John Ibrahim's older brother, Sam the notoriously brutal nomad bikey boss. It was a dangerous new world. Simone was on the fast track to a fast life, and she loved it. It was alive. I just felt happy, you know, because everything was so exciting. And so you're using drugs, you're drinking a lot, you're partying hard. Yep. Right. Yep. You're also working as a prostitute. Oh, I was a high-class escort. Simone was probably born with good looks that got her in trouble. She was programmed by her mother at a very, very young age to, to, do, uh, to go into that life. And as she said, it's glamorous. Mark Morrie is a journalist and author who's been writing about the Sydney underworld for decades. So here you have a very bright and beautiful-looking young female and... Um, Next thing you know, she's mixing in a very, very fast world at King's Cross. And that's where she linked up with Brett Boyd. Brett Boyd was a bodybuilder and model and a close friend of nightclub owner John Ibrahim. Simone fell in love with Boyd. We hooked up and that was it, the beginning of a wild ride. He was the love of your life? He was the love of my life at the time, yeah, definitely. He's a big guy. He's a big guy. And he was, you know, and I felt like he had a lot of 
I, his presence was known, you know, and people, people really knew him, looked up to him. If it wasn't for his looks and his modelling and that, it was God knows for whatever other reason. But people were drawn to him, and I was, I was drawn to him too. But he was, he was very vain and egotistical. Right. <laughs> yeah. He also helped to go out and work in escort agencies, so I don't find that as very much as a way of showing how you love. But they had it, you know, that was that was their relationship. Boyd was a part-time fitness trainer, and both he and Simone spent a lot of time in the gym working out. It was while he was pumping iron that Boyd met TV presenter Robert D. Heredia. Very close associate of Brett's. They were always together doing stuff. A lot of stuff I didn't know about. They just spent a lot of time alone. Later, it would be claimed D. Heredia had loaned Boyd money so Boyd could create an internet business with Simone. I understand you two were going into business. Yes, I wanted to open up a um, with the internet porn site and I thought, well, we're in the industry, this is great. This is a step up and a step out of the other area. And he was into it. He thought it was a great idea. In May 1998, Boyd moved into this house in the northern Sydney suburb of Belrose. He told Simone that he'd had death threats. He told very few people he was living here. On the night of June 15, 1998, the couple went out for dinner at a restaurant in King's Cross. Simone is now revealing for the first time that during dinner, Brett received a mysterious phone call, warning him not to bring Simone back to his Belrose home. I'll never forget, he just looked at me and said, no, you can't come back tonight. I said, why? I've been asked not to bring you. I was like, I went off about that, and he's like, you can't come, that's it, end of story. So I had an argument with him about that, and he goes, listen, I'll call you tomorrow, don't worry about it, we'll make up for it, blah, 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 and off I went with the shits. When Boyd arrived home alone, he noticed a package. The size of a shoebox wrapped in brown paper. Written on the outside was Simone, misspelled with an extra M. Curiosity got the better of Boyd as he picked up the parcel to take a closer look. It was designed to, to kill, but also in a really extremely painful way. There were bolts, nails and razor blades. And only half of it went off properly. And that's what maybe, saved, well, it did save Brett's life, along with being physically fit. Boyd was lucky to be alive. He lost his left eye and right thumb and 80% of his vision in his right eye. Where were you? At a mate's house. Doing what? Cocaine. I went out and got on it and didn't find out till the next day. How did you find out? Um, my phone kept ringing and then I checked my voicemail a few hours later and it was the police. They told me what had happened. I turned on the news and um, it was big. The device had been planted outside the home of 27-year-old personal fitness trainer Brett Boyd, who'd moved in with his model girlfriend a month ago. I just thought, what's happened to Brett? And I was shattered. I was shattered and shocked. When Boyd woke up from a coma, he told Simone he was the target of the bomb. He held my hand and he said, it's not meant for you. You believed him? Oh, I just knew, knew. He's got no reason to lie. Whoever, you know, is behind that understood what was going on in our relationship and our business and everything, because they planned that real well. Mm. And you had nothing to do with... No, not with that. I didn't know... Why? I love this guy. Is there a chance that it could have been meant for her? I... <sighs> I've thought about it. I've talked to a lot of people who were around at the time. I don't think she warranted that sort of sophisticated attempt on her life. The theory is the only reason it was addressed to Simone is that if it was addressed to Brett, he wouldn't have picked it up. So he's gone. I thought it was shoes that Simone had ordered. No one knows that I live here. And that was why he picked it up. More than two decades on, Simone is returning to the scene of the crime. 
This is the first time you've been back. Yeah, it's the first time. Yeah, it's um, it feels a bit different. I obviously a lot of time has passed. It yeah. looks exactly the same as what it did before. Being here brings back memories. The night before the explosion, Simone was in the house with Boyd when motion sensors caused the outside lights to flicker. Which obviously means that there's movement. So they kind of, and they go off in sequence. So they went off there and then there and then round there. Whether that was a dry run or a cat next door, who knows? But she said Brett sprung out of bed. He was, he's edgy, very, very edgy. Boyd was edgy because he'd had death threats before the bombing. DNA discovered on parcel bomb stamps led police to a prime suspect, TV presenter Robert D. Heredia. There was a touch of personal vendetta in there. And, you know, I was told that there was personal animosity between Brett and, and D. Heredia. D. Heredia was charged with attempted murder. The alleged motive? an $80,000 loan that Boyd had not repaid. Nearly a year later, when De Heredia was released on bail, Boyd was waiting to ambush him outside Randwick Police Station in Sydney's East, armed with a machine gun and a 9mm pistol. Boyd was arrested and then later freed without a conviction. De Heredia survived another shooting attempt, skipped bail and, using a false passport, fled to Europe, where he spent almost two decades on the run until his arrest in 2016. This morning, after 17 years, he returned home, extradited with detectives by his side. De Heredia was tried twice over the bombing. The first ended in a hung jury. The second found him not guilty of the attempted murder of Boyd. While Boyd's physical injuries healed, he never recovered from the emotional trauma and took his own life in 2008. He was beautiful and then he was scarred, you know? I mean, you look at the photos of him, he was a mess, you know? And he committed suicide and let's face it, everybody that had anything to do with him believes that that bomb killed him. Simone didn't learn about Boyd's suicide for some time. She'd moved to the US, changed her name from Simone Chung to Simone Farrow, and then Simone Star. I feel really beautiful here. <laughs> she launched a modelling and music career, but was soon drawn back into the criminal life and the authorities were watching. Came under the attention of the Drug Enforcement Agency in America and was involved in shipping methamphetamine back to Australia. And she came back here in 2009 and was arrested. The allegation is that she was importing high-grade crystal methamphetamines into Australia. And eventually was given an 11-year sentence, which is, you know, not an insignificant sentence. Um, she was considered to be the, the major player in this cartel, and in fact. Drug queen. Drug queen, yeah. And she's done, she's done, did seven years. Seven years is a long time to think about what you've done wrong. And she says she spent most of her time thinking about that. Simone was released from prison last week. One of the first things she wanted to do was visit Brett Boyd's grave to say goodbye. And I know you really love me, even though you didn't always show it. But you always have a place in my heart. She is determined to turn the page on her old life and use all that she's learned to help other young women at risk who are caught up in the fast life. There's not been a lot of joy, you know. It's a loveless existence. It sounds like you were chasing happiness for so I'm long. I'm always chasing happiness, you know. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's funny you should say that because, um, you know, Brett, I remember it was one of the last times I saw him and he goes, you know what, Simone, all I want for you is um, for you to find happiness because I know that's the one thing 
that you've, oh my God, sorry. Um, that's the one thing that you have been trying to find all your life. And you know what, at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, if I could pay for it and buy it, I would. But you can't buy that kind of stuff, you know, it has to come to you. I haven't been happy for a long time, you know. Sometimes I'm my own worst enemy, you know. Sorry. I hate that word. <laughs> <laughs>